welcome to the house. How's everyone doing? Yep. We're good. <laughs> All right, well, the few of you who said yeah. All right, I want to welcome you to stand. We're going to get worshiping tonight. Who's excited? <laughs> yeah, I love for you to see you, That's awesome.
Hallelujah. Praise his name. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you guys can stay standing for a minute. I'm going to read the word. This is out of the prophet Isaiah, the 57th chapter. For thus saith the Lord and the lofty one who inhabits an eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and the holy place with him who has a contrite and a humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. This is God speaking. And first of all, I just want to, <laughs> I'm just blown away by the fact that he's the holy one. He's the one whose name is holy and he's the lofty one. And his glory is beyond anything we could possibly imagine. The Bible says that he has to humble himself just to behold the things that are in heaven and on earth. He has to literally humble himself and lower himself just to even look at his beautiful creation. That's just talking about how glorious he is and how awesome he is and how big our God is. <laughs> in the same verse, it talks about him and what he does. He's so holy, he's so righteous, and yet <laughs> he inhabits eternity. I dwell, this is God, I dwell in the high and the lofty place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit. That word in the Hebrew, contrite, means powder. Means, and it comes from the root word uh, being ground up, basically just being crushed and ground up into a powder. And sometimes we can have a contrite spirit. We, we can feel like we're ground up into powder and everything in, the li in our lives is just ground up and we're crushed. And if that's you tonight, I want to encourage you with something. The high and the lofty God, the God of heaven and earth, he goes out of his way for those kind of people. He goes out of his way for the ones who are crushed and are broken. That's his job. That's what he does. I mean, he is so mighty and so good, and it's so hard for us to even conceptualize his glory. But we can understand love, and he, and he, and he, and he loves us, and he comes to us, and... Um, and he comes to revive. It says, in the next verse, it says, uh, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. So not only does he dwell with us and he's with us and he's in us and he comes to us when we're contrite and when we're broken, but he comes to re revive us. He comes with a purpose, okay? And I want to encourage you um, to revive. It's to quicken, to bring life, to breathe fresh life into. And so... If that's you, um, the Holy Spirit inside me says something. He says that it's easy. It's not hard. It sounds hard. It sounds difficult to come to this God who's really big and try to receive help. But he says it's, it's easy. You come to Jesus. We were just singing this song, I will call upon your name. That's all it takes for anything that you need. Healing, salvation from your sins, guilt, remorse, depression, whatever. Call upon his name. Jesus said that, he said, I am lowly and, and, and lowly and meek of heart. Come to me and I will bear your burden. He says that my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so whatever you need, whatever you are, wherever your spirit is, if you feel like you're, you're crushed, if you feel like you're broken, if you feel like you're ground up into powder, if you feel like you're low and nothing, he has something for you. He wants to bless you. That's what he does. He's not just mighty and, and amazing and just up there in the clouds playing harps and stuff. No, he goes out of his way to come to us and to love us and to bless us. And so I just want to encourage you, wherever you are, no matter what you're feeling, no matter who is in your life that's giving you trouble, no matter what's in your body, he loves you and he wants to love you. He wants to bless you and he wants to be with you and he wants to take that powder and he wants to bring it into something beautiful. He wants to take your ashes, your, your dirty, gross, nastiness, your ashes. There's nothing left but burnt pile of nothing. He wants to trade that in for beauty, and he wants to show you himself. He wants to bless you and to show you more of himself. Um, hallelujah. So just be encouraged. So I encourage you to um, call upon his name during worship. Call upon his name. something I've been waiting to share for a few weeks um, along the same lines like God is so good he's so grandiose uh, he's so big 
Um, but God gave me this dream, and he was showing me the, the way that we can interact with this great, amazing God is that God would want us to receive him simply, like a child, like a child would. And things would be so simple and so pure and so innocent. Um, I had this dream where I was looking up at the stars in the night sky and I was with a brother and in the night sky there started to appear more and more stars in the sky until it was getting to the point where the entire sky was completely covered in stars. <laughs> My brother said, what's, what's going on? And I said, the scripture says that he comes with ten thousands of his saints. And then the, the sky, the night sky became so bright that it was like it was the daytime. And there were masses and masses and masses of people, just crowds and crowds. And the clamor was so loud, it was deafening. And the sky became so bright. And I saw Jesus coming. Such a bright light. And he came and he set his feet on the ground. And everybody was in wonder. the king. They wanted to interact with the king. So they were looking through the crowd. They could catch a glimpse. They wanted to see what he was doing. And Jesus did something I didn't expect. <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. He began to have fun and run around with the children, <laughs> playing with the children, playing tag, playing games with the kids. And here was this great and mighty God. And the ones who are interacting with him and having an amazing time with God were the ones that were receiving him as children that it would become so simple that we would just see God's love, God's glory, that he's so humble and he's so gentle to us that we would receive him as children. So Father, I just pray for us as Justin shared that we would have that revelation, God, that you're so full of love, so full of humility, God, that we can receive you simply, God, as a child. It doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be complex. God, that we can just enjoy you and thank you for your presence and your great love for us, God. Your unspeakable love for us, God. And the scripture says that one of the ways, God, that you showed that great love for us is that you sent your son. You sent your son for us, that he could die for us and save us from our slavery and sin, and that we could be free, God. God, you're so good. So good. So good, God. Sing together. It was finished there on that day. Death was beaten, all darkness was slain. And all his passion poured out like the rain upon the earth. Sing that verse.
course again. It was finished. And it was finished there on that day. Death was beaten, all darkness was slain. And all his passion poured out like the rain upon the earth. is buried they came to mourn the stone was rolled away the veil was torn for he had risen he is the king of all the earth sing that again three days buried
that's how, God, you want us to approach you. That's how you want us to interact with you, God. In innocence, in purity, in humility, God. Just letting it be simple. So God, I just thank you for your love. We'll give you the praise. We'll give you the glory. And all the honor belongs to you, God. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, God. And everybody said amen. 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 All right. Give somebody a high five next to you. Tell them they're looking good in the house tonight. did. What took you so long, Rick? Where are you? Hey, family, how are you doing? Is everybody full of turkeys? Yes. Well, I'm here to share the offering today, and I prayed about it, and the Lord gave me a story, so I'm going to tell you a story. kind of goes along with the theme of children and worship, and how God speaks to us about our worship today. So I'm going to tell you a story. Anyway, in this story... We have um, a king who's not a king yet. His name is David, and he's on the run from King Saul. And he is, he's pretty weary. He's pretty tired. Maybe he's a little crushed. We don't know, but he's tired. And um, the cool thing is, is he had these three mighty men 
and I love that. It kind of reminds me of, there's this movie out right now that's about um, the mighty or the glorious, I think they use a B word, the inglorious or, you know, all those guys, you know, that are really tough and they can fight anything and they've got machines and stuff, but these guys, I mean, they were seriously tough. They were kind of like that 300 get gladiator movie or whatever it was. I don't know. I didn't watch it. Anyway, so these guys, they were seriously the, the tough guys. And so David is laying around, and he's just, you know, how you just remember that, you know, when you're going through something really tough, you remember, like, the really good stuff, right? Like, you know, I'm so thirsty, and water tastes so good. And... Uh, so he was sitting there, and he was thinking about the water that came from the middle of the city out of this certain well. And he was thinking, oh, and he said out loud, you know, I just, just to have a cup of that water would be so good. I just would so love to have that, and, you know, thinking of the memories of this and everything. Well, unbeknownst to him, these guys, they heard him say this, and they, they went in the middle of the night, they went into the city and they brought back a cup of that water. I mean, in the city, you know, there was, Saul had a huge army. He could have taken them out. And I mean, these guys, they were pretty amazing to be able to get in and get that cup of water. And then to travel with a cup of water, can you imagine? <laughs> they brought a cup of water back to him. So, or a vessel, whatever. Anyway, so they brought this water to him and he was just so amazed because he knew what had, it had taken for <laughs> he knew what it, it had taken for them to to get that cup of water and um, I can just imagine him standing there thinking you actually did this really and I'm sure tears came to his eyes and the sacrifice I mean they could have been dead and um, he took it and he said I can't drink this and he poured it out as an offering to the Lord. And, I mean, these guys gave their lives to get that cup of water. Now, some people might think, we just, <laughs> we just spent our, you know, our lives. We risked our lives for you, and you poured that out. But it kind of shows you the reverence and the awe that David had for the Lord and how much he loved God and how precious the gift was. And he poured it out. Just like Jesus, or how God, he sent his only son. You know, we think about at Christmas time, he sent his son for us. His most precious, precious thing, you know, as a gift to us. And so at Christmas time, I think about um, this lady that, that we knew. And uh, this is the personal part of the story. And um, she had just, she's a brand new Christian, had just found out about giving you know, at, at church, at her, the church she was attending. And um, she was a single mom, didn't have a whole lot. She had just started a job, and um, she had to dis make a decision uh, as to what she'd learned. You know, she'd learned about giving, and so, um, you know, and giving her best. And so she decided that she was going to give her paycheck. She gave her paycheck, and it was either that or, or to eat for her and her daughter. And um, the cool thing was is that God saw that. He saw that. And uh, these people, it was so cool what they did is they, they didn't know that this had taken place. And they went and they got like a whole station wagon full of food and toys and things for this mom. And, um, and they took it to her while she was at work. And um, they never met her. They never got to see how she, re, you know, how she took that in or whatever. But can you imagine, you know, when you give, you know, when you give your best to God, what he can do with that. He does amazing things. It honors him so much. And so it's kind of like when you give, it's like an act of worship. And so I want you to think about this this month, and December's a crazy month. We're already, we already have money going out on things that, you know, gifts and things for our kids and things like that. But don't forget to give your, your best, give your gift to God and to worship him in your giving. 
and how much that honors him. So I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, right now, I just thank you so much for my family, the house. And I just ask that during this season that you would just open up, op open up the heavens and just pour out a blessing that they cannot contain. Lord, I just thank you for giving them spontaneous ideas on giving to others and blessing others during this season of giving. And we just thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, it was better than that. <laughs> Spence, can you turn on another light in here because it's kind of dark? That way people can take notes. And Rick, can you bring me down just a little bit? There we go. Good. Perfect. It's good to see you, everybody here at the house. Everybody have a great Thanksgiving. All right. I know I enjoyed myself uh, at Char's house, Rick and Char. Very nice of them to have us come over and had a beautiful dinner and then a beautiful Seahawks win. So anyways, we are, if, if sound is a little bit funky tonight, is because we're, uh, we've got our brand new soundboard. All right, yeah. Thank you to everybody that just uh, that poured their money into that. We really appreciate that, and uh, so it's going to just keep getting better and better and better uh, as the as the weeks go on. And so they're just test driving it tonight and learning how to run all the different things. So good job, Rick and Preston came in early at two o'clock today and uh, got that process going. So, anyways, got a few other things here for you as well. Don't forget the ten thousand foot challenge. For those of you who don't know what that is, we're, um, bringing, we're asking people to bring socks, brand new socks, and put them in the basket in the back of the church. Um, we're believing God to give uh, 5,000 pairs or 10,000 socks, 10,000 feet, uh, out uh, by next September 10th, which will be our 10th anniversary. And we think that'll just be a really cool way of celebrating our 10th anniversary by just helping people with by helping homeless people and people in need with um, brand new socks. So we'll be bringing those in. I think we're somewhere close to 530 feet high so far. So good job, guys. We'll keep that going. We just started that a couple weeks ago, and you guys are doing great with that. Hey, welcome to everybody that's watching online. And uh, uh, we have people that watch online. We've got a great website. If you're, never here, if you're not here, uh, you can watch us online at housenorthwest.com, live stream us, and uh, Colby and uh, Kyle and, and the sound guys all do a great job uh, making sure that that's great for you. Also, if you're a first-time guest, don't forget your welcome home card. Fill that out. You can either leave it on your table or if you could, take it back to the giving station. There's a basket back there and we'll send you something cool in the mail. And then uh, just a couple other things. My mom is here. She moved here from Arizona. We're glad she's here. She's already starting to pick up some really, uh, and do some cool stuff. And then the Strums are here as well. Kyle and Emily, why don't you guys stand here, give them a round of applause. They were our youth pastors for a couple of years, did just such a fantastic job while they were here. We missed them terribly. And so it's always fun to have them when they come back. And then uh, finally as well, uh, on your tables or out uh, by the children's ministry sign in, there are these little uh, papers, books, blocks, and board games. They're doing a toy drive with the children's ministry, and um, anyways, all of that's going to be going to the YWCA of Clark County, so another great opportunity for you to give, okay? Okay, good. Anyways, uh, Janelle, where are you? Parker, there you are, right in the middle, dead center. She sent me these jokes, okay? So, um, is that better? Good. Excellent. Thanks, Preston. You never know with that beard what he's going to do back there. So I've got to... <laughs> Love you, Preston. All right. Here we go. 25 of the best two-line jokes ever. Parallel lines, parallel lines have so much in common, it's shame that'll never meet. My wife accused me of being immature. I told her to get out of my fort. I was going to add blanket for it, but I didn't. All right. Uh, women only call me ugly until they find out how much money I make. Then they call me ugly and poor. <laughs> how many Germans does it take to screw in a light bulb? One. They're efficient and not very funny. <laughs> what do you call a dog with no legs? It doesn't matter. It's not going to come. 
I wish Todd was here. He's on vacation, right? Uh, they did the... They were, anyways, someone stole my Microsoft Office, and they're going to pay. You have my word. What's green, fuzzy, and fell out of a... If it fell out of a tree, it would kill you. A pool table. How do you find Will Smith in the snow? You look for the fresh prints. <laughs> Went to a really emotional wedding the other day. Even the cake was in tears. That's good stuff, I'm telling you. <laughs> I don't know if I should say this one. All right, we have a genetic predisposition for diarrhea. It runs in our genes. I'm going to keep moving on here. <laughs> Want to hear a word I just made up? Plagiarism. <laughs> I'm close. All right, I took the shell off my racing snail, thinking it would make him run faster. If anything, it made him more sluggish. And the Lord said unto John, Come forth, and you will receive eternal life. But John came in fifth and won a toaster. <laughs> How do you think the unthinkable with an iceberg? Someone stole my mood ring, and I don't know how to feel about it. The first rule of Alzheimer's Club is don't talk about chess club. Hilarious. I know. Why does a chicken coop have two doors? If it had four doors, it would be a chicken sedan. <laughs> and finally, I told my wife she was drawing her eyebrows too high. She looked surprised. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't commit. All right, we're wrapping up a series about wholeness, and like I said last week as well, we're going to be kicking off into the December, uh, Saturday night, a series uh, on It's a Wonderful Life, and we'll take some video clips from that, and then the final, um, the weekend before Christmas, we're going to have a, actually a kind of a Christmas party here as well. We'll have a, a, a kind of a smaller service, but uh, it's going to be a great opportunity for you to uh, reach out to family and friends bring them to church, and we'll have a great time. And then also Christmas Eve, that's a Wednesday night. The People's Church has invited us to come. They're having a, from 5 till 6 p.m., a Christmas Eve service. And so opportunities, lots of Christmas opportunities for people to come and, and receive Christ or, uh, and hear about the good news of Jesus, okay? All right, good. So let's talk about healing. We're going to wrap up a series on healing tonight. And uh, we shared last week out of Acts chapter 9, verse 32 and following, it says, Peter went off on a mission to visit all the churches. In the course of his travels, he arrived in, in Ly Lydia, Ly Lydia, there we go, Lydia, and met with the believers there. He came across a man, his name was Aeneas, and he had been in bed eight years paralyzed. Peter said, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you, makes you whole. Get up, make your bed, and he did it, jumped right out of bed. Everybody who lived in Lydda and Sharon saw him walking around, woke up to the fact that God was alive and active among them. I like that. You know, again, uh, the scripture that uh, Justin shared earlier was talking about revival, new life. You know, really being revived in the spirit is really coming alive to the truth of what God is doing in the world. You know what I'm saying? And how many of you know that God is moving and doing incredible stuff all over the world? A few years back, I showed a video of a man being raised from the dead that had died, uh, and they had prayed over him, and he came back to life. Pretty amazing stuff. I don't know how many of you remember that, that we're here. A few hands going up. Okay, cool. Um, but the great thing about when God does a miracle, when he works a miracle, that miracle's not only to be used as a blessing for the person to receive it, but it's also supposed to be used as a testimony to people that need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. I've said it before, I'll say it again, that healing is the dinner bell for people that need to know Jesus. It's the dinner bell. Come on, get it, right? Jesus is awesome and he loves us. And so, again, Peter looked at this man who'd been 
crippled for eight years, paralyzed for eight years, and said, get up. Jesus Christ heals you, makes you whole. And so the man jumped up, and everybody heard about it. Wholeness, what is wholeness? In the definition, uh, just a strict definition of it, it means to be not broken, damaged, impaired, but to be intact. Also, uninjured or unharmed, to be sound. See, Jesus Christ has come to make us whole so that we're uninjured, to be in, in, intact, completely sound, completely whole, right? And then I shared also out of Ephesians 3.20 last week. It says, Now to him who is able to do super abundantly more than we can ask, think, or dream according to his power that's at work within us. That, and I, I broke down the words uh, and defined those as well, more abundantly and super. More is greater, additional, and further. Abundantly is overflowing quantity, quality, and degree. Super is over and above, higher in quantity and quality and degree. So if you were to put all of those definitions together, that Jesus Christ is going to do super abundantly more than we can ask, think, or dream according to his power that's at work within us, it would mean over and above in higher quantity, quality, and degree of an overflowing quality of affluence and wealth that is greater, additional, and or further. Basically, it's this. If I could just sum all that down, is that God is able to blow you away. Right? God is able to blow you away. And like I said last week, ability does not always equal reality in our lives, does it? Hello? Come on. We don't have the super abundantly more always happening in our lives, do we? No, it's not always happening. The key, like I talked about last week, is to receive his super abundantly more. To receive it. Did Jesus, this is my question for us this week. Did Jesus do the complete will of the Father in his lifetime? Oh, that was kind of timid. Is this a trick question? Um, uh, yes. Yeah, yes. 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 Yes, of course. Yes, he did. Matter of fact, you'll find in multiple places where he said that I'm you know, here to do the will of my Father. This is what I'm here to do, right? That's why he came left heaven, came to earth to do the will of the one who sent him, right? Did he do the complete will? Absolutely he did. He said it himself when he was on the cross. He said, it is finished or done. Absolutely. It's finished. It's over with. The will that God sent me here to do on this planet is now done, right? Complete. And so the question you have to ask yourself is this. Well, if he did the complete will of the Father, what did he do when it, as it pertains to healing? That's the next question that I think of, right? And I want you to leave this place tonight without a shadow of a doubt in your mind that Jesus Christ is your healer, that he came and did a work so that you could receive your healing from him. Let's look at what the word says. What did Jesus do as it pertains to healing? In Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, it says that Jesus taught and healed every sickness and disease. Now, I took these scriptures and I kind of condensed them slightly so that they would fit into your programs. But you can look them up yourselves and get the context, because context is important, right? Well, that's one thing that we've taught here at the church, is that you can't just take one scripture and pull it out of context. You have to look at the surrounding scriptures as well and find out what the Bible's truly trying to say. Correct? Come on. And you can't just take one promise that's just listed once in the Bible and make it a doctrine. You have to have two or three scriptures that support what you're trying to believe out of the Word of God, all right? Because if that was the case, you know, we could take stuff out of the Old Testament way out of context, right? And do some crazy stuff, especially against our enemies and their babies, right? Come on. Come on. And so we can't pull things out of context. We've got to, especially out of, through the New Testament, find out what the context is and walk with that and believe that, right? So Matthew 4.23, Jesus taught, healed every sickness and disease. Matthew 9.35, it tells us that Jesus taught and that he healed every sickness and disease. Matthew 8.16, Jesus cast out demons and healed all sicknesses and diseases. Matthew 10.1 Jesus sent out his disciples to deliver and heal them all. You know, I, I did a study on that word all, both in the Hebrew and also in 
the Greek, and all means all. It really literally means all. So when it says this, we can look at this and we can realize that everyone that came to them and asked for healing, what did they get? They got their healing, didn't they? And I love the fact that Jesus never turned anyone away for healing, did he? Well, one time he almost did, right? With the Samaritan woman that came to him and asked for healing, and he said, I can't give the, the children's bread to dogs. And she said, yes, but even the dogs get the, the crumbs up off the table, right? And Jesus was amazed at her faith, and he says, your faith has made you whole. Now, the point is this. Jesus said that healing was for those that were part of the family of God. And the Bible tells us that by faith, we are engrafted into the vine. We are part of the family of God. We have Father Abraham as our father. Hello? And, we, and so healing is your bread. I think of this all the time. You know, um, most mornings, Val gets up and she makes herself breakfast. And one of the things that she does is she gets her Dave's Killer Bread out and she gets, puts it in the toaster and she eats her Dave's Killer Bread, right? Uh, also much like gravel, but it's, it's a, I guess it's really good for you, right? But No, no, it's, it's really good for you. It's full of fiber, right? Right? It runs in the family, I guess, right? Anyways, my point is this. You know, those of you that have kids, you know, if they came and they said, you know, can I have some Rice Krispies for breakfast this morning? Or can I have some cereal, Cheerios, or whatever you serve at your home? Um, can I have that for breakfast? You don't go out into the backyard and scoop up gravel and say, here, eat gravel instead. Right? No, you give them, you know, make toast for them. You give them their, their cereal. Breads are a staple in our, in our diet, correct? It's part of what we eat every day. And so my point is this. Jesus said that healing is the children's bread. It's for you. It's for me. As we are part of the family of God, healing is for us. And it's not something that you should have to beg for or, or think that it's like, you know, filet mignon, you know. Every once in a while, I'll get a miracle of healing. No. It's children's bread. It's for you every day. So he sent out his disciples to deliver and heal them all. Matthew 15, 12, Jesus healed them all. Matthew 14, 14, Jesus healed their sick. Matthew 15, 30, he healed all who touched him. Luke chapter 4, verse 40, he laid his hands on them and he healed them all. Luke 6, 17 through 19 says that power went out from him and healed them all. And then there's a testimony of Jesus and what he did. Peter was preaching and he preached uh, in Cornelius' household. And one of the things he said was in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. Something you need to understand is this. The devil introduced sin, sickness, and death. He was the one that tempted Adam and Eve. And through Adam and Eve's choices, every say choices, they fell. They made a mistake. They didn't follow and obey God. And because of that, sin, sickness, and death was introduced into the world. But God also made a way for them through sacrifice, right? And in the Old Testament, we saw that they had to sacrifice animals to be right with God and have a, a proper relationship with God. But Jesus then began the ultimate sacrifice once and for all. Did away with all of those things for us, correct? He made a way for us. In 1 Peter 2.24, it says that he himself, Jesus, bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. You have to understand something. Have been, that's past tense. That means the price has been paid for you already. 
I love Psalms 103. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all our sins and who heals all of our diseases. I've said this many times in church that, that, you know, it's got that word and in there, conjunction, right? Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Tying two thoughts together. See, a lot of believers in Christ, they believe that Jesus Christ paid the price on the cross to take away their sins. How many of you believe that, right? If you didn't, you know, maybe, yeah, well, okay, we're glad you're here, okay? <laughs> you're in a good spot, okay? Uh, however, it also has that word and, tying two thoughts together and says, who forgives all our sins and who heals our diseases, all our diseases. Not some of them, not part of them, all of our diseases. And it goes on to say, and delivers our life from the grave. Isn't that awesome? Pulls us right up out of the grave. Keeps us from having a bad situation happening, right? <laughs> There's a prophecy in the book of Isaiah. And I know I'm going through the scriptures fast because I'm going to tell a few stories and I have a few things I want to share as well. But there's a prophecy of Jesus, the Messiah, to come and what he was going to bring us. Isaiah 33, 24 says this, No one living in Zion will say, I am ill. And the sins of those who dwell there will be forgiven. Now, what is this trying to tell us here? It's really important for us to pick this up because this, again, is a prophecy and Jesus fulfilled that prophecy. He came so that we could experience life. Matter of fact, John 10.10, 10, Jesus come, came that we might have life and have it more abundantly, right? The enemy comes to rob, kill, and destroy, but I'm here. You might have life, Zoe life, right? So when you look at this scripture in Isaiah 33, no one living in Zion will say, I am ill, and the sins of those who dwell there will be forgiven. What is it trying to tell us there? Living in Zion. Living in Zion. Uh, how many of you know that the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 6, I believe, it, it, Jesus teaches us how to pray, right? This is a Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 through Matthew 7. In Matthew chapter 6, he talks about, on the Sermon on the Mount, how to pray. And one of the things that he prays is this. Basically, let there be heaven here on earth. Let your will be done here as it is in heaven, right? Let your heaven come to earth. Let heaven come to earth. I'm going to say it again. Let heaven come to earth. Question. Is there any sickness in heaven? Absolutely not. Any sickness? I mean, you know, do you see, you know, anybody up in heaven laying down on a bed? Oh, man, this headache. Whew. Gabriel, come massage my temples, you know. No, there's no sickness. There's no sin. There's no death in heaven. Heaven is perfect. It's amazing. In Zion, those that live in Zion, the principle that's trying to be taught to us is this. We have this opportunity every day to stay in the fullness of the presence of the Holy Spirit that God wants us to have that experience where we're in Him and experiencing Him to the fullest. And isn't it true? Let's just be honest here for a minute, can we? Isn't it true many times when we get ourselves tired, worn down, we're not maybe reading our Bible like we're supposed to, not praying and worshiping God like we're supposed to. We start to get a little cranky and not treating each other like we're supposed to. We start to get a little bit scratchy throat. <laughs> Good timing. Thank you, Janelle. <laughs> Achoo, you know. We start to get stressed out, right? When God is just looking at us and saying, just come to me. Come to me. Spend time with me. Put, let me I, he said this, I long to put them under my wing so that your head would just be close to his chest so that you could feel his power and his presence, his love. 
I think there's really something important for us to hear here is that if we'll stay in his presence, if we'll stay close to him, I think it's found in the book of Hebrews where it says, in him we live and move and have our being. There's that James. Who's going to help me? Acts 17. What? Acts 21. Are you sure? Okay. I'll, I'll trust you on that one. But it's in him. In him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. We're, we're, we're complete in him. We have our wholeness in him. Instead of slipping away from him. Hello? Do you see what I'm saying? God wants us to be close to him. And as we are, he'll touch us. He'll keep us strong. He'll keep us healthy. What about today? What about today? John 14. Verse 12 and following, Jesus said this, I tell you the truth. Now, if Jesus is telling you the truth, then yeah. I think in the, in the King James, it's verily, verily, I say unto thee. That was for my, my mom. <laughs> I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me, say that's me. Anyone who has faith in me, say, that's me, will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I've been doing. Well, what had he been doing, though, for those three years of ministry? Oh, Jesus taught and healed every sickness and disease. Jesus cast out demons and healed all the sicknesses and the diseases. Jesus sent out his disciples to deliver and heal them all. He healed them all. He healed their sick. He healed all who touched him. He laid his hands on them and he healed them all. Power went out of him and, held, and he healed them all. He was anointed with power and he healed all who were oppressed of the enemy. Hello? You see, we have this opportunity to receive from God this wonderful gift called healing. And it's tied together with our salvation. And all we have to do is really receive it. See, Jesus Christ paid the price for it 2,000 years ago. Just like he paid the price for all of your sins to be taken away. Were you born again 2,000 years ago? No. You got born again the moment you received the work that he did for you. The key for you tonight in the area of wholeness is to receive what the word of God says. And then not only that, but the great thing about it is that you can take that power that's within you and you can walk around and you can help others as well because anyone who has faith in him will do what he did and not only do what he did, but do greater things. <laughs> I praise God for what he's done in our lives. Healing and wholeness is yours to receive. How do you do it? Four quick things. First thing is just to stand on the word of God. Stand on the promises of God. I've given you quite a few promises right there that you can stand on, that he is here to heal you, that he's here to that you can receive your healing, right? Stand on the word. Stand on the word. It's for you to receive. Stand on it. Stand on it. I remember times in my life when I traveled as an evangelist, and at that point I didn't need healing, but I needed some finances. And there were times when we were just really needing God to come through and bless us financially, and I would literally take a promise found in God's Word, and I'd hold it up to God, and I'd say, God, you're the one that called me to do this. I wasn't looking to travel around and preach in other churches and and, and, and do this traveling ministry. You're the one that told me to do this. And so because I'm obedient to it, it's up to you to take care of our bills. And as I did that, I took the promise of God's word. Your word says that, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Right? Philippians 4, 19. Right? Am I right on that one? Nod your head yes. It makes you look good. 
And I'd lay it down on the ground, and I'd stand on my Bible. Because I'd heard of other guys that had been through other circumstances like that and would do the same exact thing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing on those promises. Standing on the word. It's so important for you to not let it slip through your fingers. It's part of receiving the thing that God has for you. And he has good things for you, right? He has good things for you, right? Don't let it slip through your, through your fingers. Stand on that word. Second thing is this. Get and stay in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Get and stay into the presence of the Holy Spirit. How do I do that? Well, it's pretty simple. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me and I will answer you and show you the unsearchable things of God. If you'll call out to him, if you'll seek him, he says, if you'll seek me, you will find me. If you'll seek after God, you will find him. Get away. Get, get into a moment where you can be by yourself and get on your knees and cry out to God. Spend time in his presence. If you're not baptized with the Holy Spirit and you don't pray in the Spirit, I encourage you to receive that gift from God. It allows you to be supercharged by the Holy Spirit so that you can have the things that he's asking for you to have or telling you that you can have, all right? Get and stay in the presence of the Holy Spirit. The third thing is this. Claim healing as yours. Claim healing as yours. A lot of people, they think of it this way. I call it the mother-in-law mentality. I was talking with Justin about it this week. How many of you were at, with your mother-in-law at all this weekend? I, or for uh, Thanksgiving, right? Val, you were with your mother-in-law. Right. I love my mom, and I love my mother-in-law very much. Where are you at, Sally? She was, there you are. Awesome. And the great thing about going to Grammy's house or to Nana's house is that when you go to get pie there, they cut you a nice big piece of pie. All right? But when they go to eat pie for themselves, they cut like these little tiny slivers. And, oh, I'm just going to have this little sliver here, right? I'm just going to just have this, this is, I want everybody else to have a nice big piece of pie, right? I'm just going to get this little, little tiny sliver, right? How many of you have seen this before, right? Let me say, this is silliness, okay? This is just silliness. Everybody deserves a big piece of pie, okay? If you have to make an extra pie, make an extra pie. All this, oh, I'm just... Mm. And there's Christians that are the same way. They're the same way. They're like, oh, God, you know, I know I have a lot of needs, but you know what, let's just give it to her. And You know, she's so cute and so sweet and plays the violin. She's just wonderful. I'm just going to bless her, Lord, with a big piece of you. Right? And it's like, I'll just, no, it's okay. And so, like, you get an opportunity to pray at the front, you know, and have somebody pray for you for your healing. It's like, well, my thing is not that big or that bad or that whatever, right? It's like, mm, someone else. Someone, go ahead, you go ahead, right? That is stinking thinking. This is horrible. You have to understand something with God. With God, we all get the whole pie. There is more than enough healing for everyone to be healed on the whole planet. There's more than enough. Take your whole pie. Stand on the word. Stand on it. Claim that promise as yours. Claim healing as yours. I tell it myself all the time. I look at myself, I tell myself, I am the healthiest man in my town. I'm the healthiest man in my town. And I believe it. And I am. And I am. And then finally, number four, pursue your health. Pursue the health that God has for you. Do whatever it takes to become healthy. One thing I love about our church is there's a big group of people that love to go on these runs. Turkey trots, right? Trot, trot, not trots, right? It's kind of a theme tonight, isn't it? I'm sorry, please forgive me. Turkey trot. You got the whole pie because you ran 10K, 5K? 5K, well, still, you know, two point whatever miles at it. That's amazing. 
That's awesome. And these people are running. And uh, Carrie, you're going to do a half marathon, or did you do it already? Next May. I'm so proud of you. I am so proud of you. You're amazing. You know, that's so cool. We've got to pursue health. Pursue it and do all that we can. Get up and move, right? And I'm one to talk. I know. Look at me. I'm in shape. Round is a shape, right? <laughs> Come on. Pursue your health. Pursue it. And don't settle for less. Don't settle for less than healthy. Don't settle for, well, you know, I'm, I'm okay in this area, but I really need some help in this area. Don't settle for that. Go after it. Go after it with God. Talk to God about it. I talk to God about my health all the time. You ever talk to him? Right? It's like, God, I don't like the way I am right now. He knows. He knows your heart. He knows even before you say something. He knows what it's going to be. And it's up to us to be good stewards of the temple of God's Holy Spirit that he's given us. Right? And whether your healing comes through somebody laying hands on you and praying for you, or whether you go to a doctor and you get some help that way as well, I want you to know something. I'm for it. I'm for it. Why? Because the Bible says that a joyful heart does good like a medicine. And for the Bible to say something like that, there has to be something inherently good about the medical field. But my encouragement is this. Don't go to the medical field first. Go to God first. Go to God first. Don't, you know, get that anchor pain. Oh, 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 it must be WebMD, you know. I have this achy pain right here. Oh, what? Liver cancer? Some people are like that. Hello? Come on. Aren't we funny sometimes? Pursue it. Pursue the life. Pursue the health. Pursue the blessings and promise that he has for us, all right? This is what we're going to do tonight. We're going to open up the front for prayer. I feel like I'm supposed to tell a story before we close out. You know, the Word of God stirs up our faith, or excuse me, gives us faith. But testimonies stir our faith. And I've got so many, I literally hundreds and hundreds, over, well over a thousand testimonies of people being healed. Some of you are like, really? Yeah, absolutely. Think about Jesus. He'd get into a big crowd and hundreds and hundreds of people would get healed just like that, right? The Bible says in the book of John that if all the miracles that Jesus did were to be written down in a book, right at the end of the John chapter 21, it says it would take all of the books that have ever been written to put them all, write them all down. <laughs> Jesus did a lot of miracles, right? And he's still doing miracles through us, the body of Christ today. I've got one for you, all right? There was, I was doing some healing services in Ballard, Washington. You remember this story, don't you? It was a friend of yours, right, Mom? And there was a woman that was diagnosed with, what kind of cancer did she have? It was some kind of deadly cancer that was killing her, right? And she'd come to this meeting, and I had prayed for her and ministered to her, and she didn't feel anything happen, didn't experience anything supernatural in the service. What was her name? Oh, gosh, what was her name? I know it. Anyways, she went home, and she just put some praise and worship music on because she was feeling kind of tired. And so she laid down in her bed, and she had some praise and worship music. She just began to praise and worship God. And as she began to praise and worship God, something happened. Jesus showed up, entered into her room, and he could see her. She could see him. And he had this urn with him. 
And he began to just pour oil all the way up and down her body. And she, she's having this amazing experience with God. Vision faded away. She went back to her doctor's. Coomber. Karen Coomber. That's right. Completely every cancer cell wiped out of her body. Completely made whole. Jesus isn't a respecter of persons. If he'll do one thing for one of his kids, he'll do it for all of his kids. Can you imagine that? God saying no to you after he's healed someone else. And every disease, every issue that anyone has ever had here in this room or in this world has already seen that healing taken place by Jesus. And if he'll do it for one of his kids, he'll do it for all of our kids. Because he loves us all the same. I love 1 Corinthians 2.20. It says that all the promises of God are yes and amen for those that are in Christ Jesus. That means it's yes for you too. You want another story or is that enough? You want a Seahawks story? Okay, one time the Seahawks drafted a guy named Eric Unverzot. Good name, huh? Sounds like Pastor Unverzot. Yeah. Anyways, he uh, is from the New York Unverzot clan. Yep, Long Island. And he played linebacker for the University of Wisconsin and ended up being drafted in the fourth round by the Seahawks. Well, Val had read this article about how these rookies really didn't have anything to do in, during their time off. And at that time, they were, I think they practiced at Northwest Bible College where I went to Bible College. Woo. Anyways, and so she decided to call the, the Seahawks wrote him a letter and said, send this to Eric Unverzot. And basically it just said, hey, realize that you don't have a whole lot of time, but sometimes you have some free time. And if you'd like, we'd love to make you a home-cooked meal if you'd like. And I mean, he got the letter and must have called immediately. And he said, um, first of all, he wanted to meet me, right? And so he had some tickets, preseason tickets sent to me, right? And was it Scott? Mikey and I went to the game? Yeah. Anyways. And uh, that night, I met him where the, all the players le left the kingdom. And I met, he had a friend with him, Frank Beatty, big offensive tackle. He played for uh, the University of Cal and then went on to play at uh, Panhandle State in Oklahoma. Anyways, when I met Frank, the Lord began to speak to me. He told me that this was a young man that had been running from God. <laughs> okay, there's this guy, 6'5", 300 and whatever. He's a huge dude, right? And God, you're going to tell me to tell him to quit running from you? So I waited. And so we invited him over for dinner. Val made a couple big pans of lasagna, and those guys polished that lasagna off. But anyways, during dinner, they began to ask me what I did for a living. I began telling him stories about how I'd been all over the world and seen miracles take place and how... The Spirit of God would work in my life. And I looked at Frank and I said, and not only that, Frank, but the time I met you, the first time I met you, the Lord spoke to me and he told me that you were running from him, that you'd been raised in a Christian home and that you were running from God. And he just went like this. He goes, yes, sir. You know? <laughs> and so I just told him, you need to understand something. God loves you. Quit running. Come back to him. Come back to him. And as I was telling him stories about how I'd seen, you know, broken bones knit back together again and blind eyes open up, Frank looked at me. He goes, you know, I've got this problem in my back. And it happened when I was in college. And if the trainers for the Seahawks ever found out I have this problem, most likely I'll be cut from the team. He was an undrafted free agent. And I said, well, that's easy. Let's do this. So we went into the front room, and there was Frank, and I just laid hands on him and just said, in the name of Jesus, 
And I began to feel the power and the presence of God. And he said he felt like electricity shooting all through his body. And he was instantly healed at that point. And then I said, okay, Eric, you come here. And Eric didn't need any healing, but he just, I wanted him to experience the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I laid hands on him as well. And the power of God began to flow through his body. And he said it felt like electricity shooting down through his body all the way through his fingertips. And Frank went on to serve God. He got right with God and started going to church again. And now he's a school teacher and it just still loves the Lord. Just really super to see what God does. Again, I believe with all my heart, when I lay hands on people, they're going to get touched by God and get healed by God. And it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what the situation is. I believe it. I believe it. All right? Do you believe it? Are you ready to receive it? Let's stand to our feet. We're going to start singing again. And I'm going to be right up at the front here. I'm going to have some of my leadership team as well that would like to come up and pray as well. Let's just believe God for some incredible miracles to take place. All right? And then we'll come up and we'll wrap it up here. All right? Go ahead, Preston. Yeah. 
give uh, Chelsea a big hug. Val, you as well. Just give her a big hug. Nana, go give her a big hug. Come on. See, love is the way that healing is imparted. And, you know, Val had a great word for Chelsea a while back when it came to the healing of her kidney. And we've stood and we've stand and we continue stand. You know what I was telling Val today? I don't ever pray for Chelsea to be healed anymore. I just never do it anymore. I just thank God she is what God's word says she is, completely healed. But the word was Jenga, and all the blocks fell into the right place. And all the blocks have fallen into the right place. This is just a hiccup that's just the enemy's trying to stop, block, and hinder you. Amen. That's an attack from the enemy. I just know it. And we just won't receive that anymore. Amen. Praise God. We'll take another hug then. <laughs> so anybody else need a touch in your body? You just kind of just need something from Jesus. Go ahead. Just raise your hand real quick. Anybody else? Okay, right back there, our brother. Um, Roger and uh, let's see who else. Uh, you guys, yeah, come on, go over. Just give that guy a hug and, and say, Jesus. Yeah, no, I'm talking about you guys. Come on. Yeah, there you go. Get over there. That's right. My mind's going blank on me. Yeah, absolutely. Roger, get over there and give him a hug. 
Sorry, brother, we were a hugging church. We're a loving church. Amen. Just receive your healing. That's it, right there. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Does anybody here have scoliosis of the, of the spine? Anybody? Okay. <laughs> Can I minister to you real quickly? I've seen it healed many times. Here, why don't you hand off a baby to dad? Or even Miss Nancy. Yeah, come on up here, Ben, as well. Oh, Mama. <laughs> Just close your eyes, raise your hands, think of Jesus. This is so simple. Yeah, there it is right there. <laughs> That's it, Ben. Just run your hand right down her, down her spine. Tell her to straighten up. <laughs> <laughs> Straighten up. In Jesus' name. Go ahead and bend over. Bend over. There you go. Straighten up in Jesus' name. Yeah, you can see it there. Straighten up. Go ahead and stand back up. Move around a little bit. Is it poppy? But it feels different? Amen. Let's do another one. Here we go. Go ahead and bend over just slightly. That's good right there. Straighten up. <laughs> Straighten up. Amen. Stand up again. Move around a little bit. Feeling freer and freer. Praise God. That, that, it popped, right? Yeah. See, it's all popping back into alignment. Feels good? Right on. Praise the Lord. Hug your husband. Tell him you love him. <laughs> I love you too as well. It's awesome. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The torn rotator cuff in the shoulder. Who's got that? Me. Who's me? me? Come on. I didn't know that. You've never told me that. Jesse as well? All right. Which one? Okay, easy. You ready? Here he goes. There it is. Be healed. Knit back together again. There it is. Move your arm. It's not popping anymore, is it? It was. It used to pop, huh? Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't pop anymore. <laughs> Which one? Okay. It's easy. You ready? There it is. There it is. <laughs> How long ago did you do this? Two years ago in August. Okay. I literally feel like it's almost like a needle of power shooting into there, coming right through my palm, just firing right into it. Is it starting to go numb at all? Huh? Out oh, your other hand? <laughs> yeah. Be healed. Completely made whole in Jesus' name. Wow. Now it's on fire right there. Go ahead and move it around. And? Still got a pop. But how does it feel? Feels good, huh? No more popping in Jesus' name. Completely free. Completely free. Go ahead and move it again. Thank you, Jesus. No pop. Amen. Give me a hug. I love you, Jesse. I love you. Praise the Lord. Somebody has a rib out that... Um, let me explain what it is. It's, it's your alignment in your back, but there's a rib that's out of alignment that's causing like an achiness in your back. Who's that? Just like the achiness on the side of your back. I know you're here. Who is it? All right. You ready? Okay, move. Yeah, of course. 
Amen. Anyone else? Okay. Come on up, brother. Feel better? Amen. I appreciate you guys all hanging out with us. Amen. <laughs> How are you doing? What's your name? I'm Dan. Dan, nice to meet you. I'm glad you're here. Where, where is it at? Right here? Oh, yeah, it's easy. You ready? Just close your eyes. Think of Jesus. There it is. <laughs> you're easy. That was fast. <laughs> Go ahead and move it around. <laughs> it's a lot different, isn't it? Give me a hug, man. <laughs> I love you. I'm glad you're here. You got a great future ahead of you, sir. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, Lord, we just thank you. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and glory and honor. God, you're just cool. You're awesome. You're amazing. The stars are getting brighter. Right, Preston? Let's play with Jesus a little bit, right? <laughs> I think that's probably why you like me. And so why I like you too. I don't think you play enough though. I think you're a little too serious sometimes. I love you though. You're amazing. Your mother in law wants you to move to California. That ain't happening. No. No. No, 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 right? All right. Anybody else want anything from Jesus tonight? Just refreshing or doesn't have to be healing. Times are refreshing. Yes. <laughs> Does it? Point at it. Where? Point at it again. Okay, move around a little bit. Is it gone? Point at it. Point at it. Okay, we'll move around. Is it still there? Yeah. Better. Imagine point at it again. Where is it at? Right there. Right there? Right, right there? Right there. Okay, move around. Much better. I love you. Anybody else? All right, guys. We're done. <laughs> we love you. And uh, have a great week. Next week, we're starting out our Christmas themes, all right? So it's going to be fun. You're going to sing at least one Christmas carol next week, right? Oh, yeah. And Preston, are we going to ever sing that one cool song? I'm calling you out right now in front of the whole church. How many kings? All right. All right? I'm calling you out, the whole worship team. How many kings? Okay. All right, I want to hear that. That's my favorite Christmas carol right now. Have you ever heard that, How Many Kings? You want me to sing it? How many kings stepped down from the throne? Okay, God bless you guys. Have a great week. We love you.